Hello, everyone. I hope the start of the new semester has been treating you well. It's been wonderful to spend time with so many of you on campus recently at new faculty orientation or teaching day, but also in the community at events such as the Steel Blade Classic and, of course, Brock Night at the Grape and Wine Festival. As the new Senate year kicks off, I want to share that we are soon going to be working on updates to Brock's policy on evaluation, as well as the policy on academic accommodations for students with disabilities. Now, of course, alongside policy, we're constantly looking for ways to also improve university practices and procedures. And it's one such improvement that I'm delighted to share with you today. It concerns the Student Medical Self-Declaration Form. Many of you will know that this process was instituted by Brock Senate in February of 2022, and it served to remove the requirement for students to present medical notes when they are unwell or unable to complete their academic activities for absences of three days or less. Now, after a year of living with this new process, we gathered feedback from the university community. And this included feedback from more than uh, 100 faculty members, professional librarians, staff, and students, all of which indicated strong support for the continued use of this process. This included feedback from student health services, which confirmed that the process had indeed significantly alleviated the stress on the demand for their support by freeing up appointments for healthcare delivery, just as envisioned. But the feedback also included several recommendations for ways in which the parameters governing the use of the medical self-declaration process might be clarified or otherwise revised. One of these themes reflected the logistical burden being experienced by some instructors and some teaching assistants in managing what, has, what really has been an email-driven process and tracking which students had already utilized the process in which course. So, in an effort to help address this challenge for instructors and for teaching assistants, I'm happy to share that CPI has developed instructions for how you may now use Brightspace, our new learning management system, to more easily track submissions of the medical self-declaration form. These instructions are available in the CPI Educational Technology Knowledge Base, and they're featured in this month's CPI newsletter as well. Now, beyond policies and procedures, of course, we continue to work on several fronts to try and better support your teaching and learning needs. This includes by upgrading and modernizing classrooms, as we've been doing throughout the spring and summer terms, in buildings such as McKinsey Chown, Welsh Hall, and South Block. We've been planning CPI's new webinar series on assessment, which of course kicks off this week on September 26th. Adjudicating the latest round of Open Educational Resources adoption grant applications and onboarding our new cohort of faculty champions in experiential education. This, by the way, includes Teresa Russo from the Faculty of Humanities, Laura Cousins from the Faculty of Applied Health Sciences, Sandra De La Porta from the Faculty of Education, Dave Bukinuki from the Goodman School of Business, and Kate Cassidy from the Faculty of Social Sciences. Congratulations to them all. I want to finish by just reminding you that my door and my inbox, indeed, is always open if you wish to discuss other ways in which we, as a university community, can better support your critical work as educators. So please don't hesitate to reach out. For now, I wish you a wonderful semester, and I hope to see you around campus soon. Thank you.